Hello everybody and welcome to Astro Lost in Space, episode 11, anime review, penultimate episode, and it was late. I don't know why it was late. Funimation? Why was it late? Uh, yeah, of all the shows to be late, didn't didn't want this one, because this, this one's heavily like story and and like cliffhanger driven. D don't release the episode late, it was at least, what, five hours late? It was meant to come out at 6, no, way longer, 7. I looked at half past 9, my time, and it, that's when I saw it was out. Because that's 7 and a half hours after it was meant to come out. I don't know the exact time it came out, because I assumed it would just come out tomorrow. But no, it's just a bit late, but uh, not good. But anyway, onto the actual episode itself. It, I flip in, I say it every week, I'm just, I can't look away. I'm just, this is, this is actually, it's probably the best, or my favourite, like, plot show this week this week this se this season like you've got a thing a lot of things that are like action -y focused as far as actual like plot and story goes this thing is probably my favorite because all the other big things like you got what fire force you got vinland saga or what else is there there's other things as well but they're mostly like fighty fighty shows if you know and this is like not fighty fighty have there been any fighting i mean depends on your definition of fighting i guess there was a few little it's more like exploration -y and stuff like that. But anyway, I'm rambling. Let's get on with the actual episode. Start from the beginning and go through it. Because blimmin' hell, as ever, we've got one episode left. I, oh, I'm actually going to be a little bit sad when it ends. But at the same time, I'm glad it is ending. I like shows that actually finish, if that makes sense. Instead of just left being left unfinished like every anime ever. But anyway, let's do this thing. We start where we left off last week. Shas is a clone of the king and all that. We get some Shas backstory. He knew he was a clone the whole time and accepted what his job was. He's like, one day my body's going to go to the king and all that. Uh, and then he got told to die. And it's like, oh. And he carried it without... Carried it. He was going to carry it out without any complaints because that's just the way he was being raised. He was raised to obey the king. That was it. The whole Sarah story with his childhood friend or whatever, completely fabricated. Well, not completely, but... You get what I'm saying? I knew something didn't add up and, you know, figured it out because it was a red herring and it was a complete lie. So thanks for that, Shas. I spent a lot of time theorizing about that. And uh, also, here's another little, um, I don't know if it's a clue or what. In the opening, Ariez's name is the only one that's upside down. Like all the others are like right side up. Hers is the only one that's upside down. So I don't know if that's a clue or if that's me looking way too far into something. But it's worth noting, I think. Uh, he was raised to obey the king. Kanata tells him he's lying to himself because... And that they are really friends. He did enjoy himself. He's, he's lying to himself so he can go through with it, I guess. Uh, brings up that he retracted the spheres. And, of course, Shaft's got an answer to that. He's like, actually, didn't want to kill Ariez because... Because she's a clone of the princess who is Sarah. Princess Sarah, clone is Arias. Sarah was nice to him. She didn't agree with the cloning and all that. Didn't even want a clone. But uh, once she got a clone, she stuck her with like the handmaiden, the surrogate mother of the clone, which is Arias, in case you're lo losing track. And then they get sent off. Names her. Names are incredibly creative with her naming. She's holding a handkerchief. Just holds it upside down. It's like, oh yeah, you know what? That's a good name. I mean, it makes sense because that's the whole thing. It's like, oh yeah, Arias is Sarah backwards crazy stuff um, and then a year before camp Sarah was shoved off a cliff and died presumably died I mean we don't see her land but I, d I don't think she lived hope we find out who those assassins are although we've got an episode left I've just got a feeling we might not find out who they are my also my gut is telling me they might be someone else related to the main characters my gut is telling me it's Kanata's dad but I have no evidence to support that it's literally just gut feeling. It's probably no. It's probably just something completely unrelated. And I'm, again, looking far too far into it. Uh, Shas was put in the dungeon because I guess it was his fault. I guess it was with the court ruling or something. I don't know. Uh, but then due to the law change of the you know the genetics code, the, the thing, whatever it is, the law says that's bad. You can't be doing cloning. Uh, he's like, you have to die. And then he leaves. And then he's got this whole, that's my... Because he's like, while he was in his cell, he came to the conclusion that he has no purpose, no reason to live, and he's like, here's your job, die and kill them all. And he's like, that could be my purpose, my reason for living. A bit depressing, but we're making sense, you know? 
It does, it does make sense in a morbid kind of way. Ariez is very shocked at the news that her mum and her mum are different people. I know it's very confusing. It's not really, but it makes sense, I promise. Um, yeah, then she, she's there because she was meant to be hidden. Uh, Shas reckons that the assassin group got her in, on the mission camp to um, somehow. They, so, they were behind it somehow, is what I'm trying to say. Uh, and he wants to save her because she's Sarah, and then the king will be all happy and everything. Uh, and then Kenneth is like, cut the crap. You're not doing this for the king, you're doing this for, for you, because you were sad that she died. Uh, you know, the king has absolutely nothing to do with it. It's all because of you. Uh, then Kenneth punches him a bit, because he's like, I'll die alone, you know? I'll come back afterwards and I'll die on myself. Kenneth punches him, doesn't take that well. Uh... All of them are like, we'll all go back together, we'll all live, and all that. Good stuff, good stuff. Um, and then they do the old, you can, we've all changed, you can change too. And he's like, yeah, you know, I have changed. But then he activates the sphere, and because he's got another thing in his other arm. Uh, he activates the sphere, and, and he's not going to get them. He's going to kill himself. And while it happens, love this next scene. Karata runs at the sphere, activates the jet boots, like the fir like in the first episode, the same thing. Saw the flashback and I went, yes, love stuff like that. Absolutely gold that was. Jumps over the thing, tackles Shast down, but uh, what the sphere's close, takes his arm in, Shast deactivates the sphere. Kanata's lost an arm. Or not an arm, he's lost like, what's this part called? The forearm, he's lost that. Um, but uh, he's still alive, you know? And then it's like, you remember, he's like, you remember my promise? You're gonna be my right hand man. And it's funny, because he's missing a right hand now. So now Shas has got to take the place of his arm. That's what I got out of that. I don't even know if it was right hand. I think it was. Yeah, I think it was. So, see, it's a funny joke. It's good. It's funny. And it's, like, emotionally impactful as well. But, uh, yeah, that was the end of the episode. As I said, bloody hell, a lot happened. Uh, but a lot happened without them moving out of the room. So that was, you know, good stuff. Anyway, next week's the finale. They're obviously going to get back to Earth expose them all and I don't know oh no earth Astra sorry sorry wrong thing that's the thing that I don't quite get is how did they all get to Astra in such a small amount of time I'm sure we might find that out next week with a bit of luck if they don't explain it I'll be a bit disappointed but but yeah because what it was like seven years could they have moved the whole planet and they don't remember earth as well no one remembers earth I don't know or maybe just the clones haven't been told you know what I don't know but uh We'll find out that next week, because I've learned that if I make theories, I'm either spot on or I'm a million miles away. So, let's just do this thing. I will see you next week for another episode, the final episode of Astro Lost in Space. Hopefully, it's on time next week. Uh, what else do I usually say? Subscribe and stuff if you enjoy reviews, because there's a lot of them down on the, the internet world. Uh, I will see you next week. There's a noise outside. That was scary. I better wrap this up quicker. Uh, and bye, guys.